Good morning. How are you? Oh, let's see. Good question. Right, let me just turn up the volume again. Sorry. <laughs> How are you so, doing? Oh, not too bad. Bored as shit being working from home all the time. But, uh, what can you do? <laughs> well, I'm fully vaccinated, you know. Oh, no, no. Congratulations. I'm going on a vacation in a few weeks to Arizona, New Mexico, and the slot canyons. How to take vacation and still be distanced from everyone else. Well. Great. Uh, they're, they're still probably, I don't know, another month, six weeks or something from getting most people vaccinated here, but it's slowly in there. But it'll happen. Um, so just for today, were we half expecting Ted to kind of see, explain his stub networks thing a bit more this time? or I didn't put it on the agenda. And I didn't, he didn't ask for anything and he didn't provide anything. Mm, that's what I thought. But we, I think we had said at the last, at, at the last ITF meeting that that would be a nice thing to happen. It just didn't happen. Okay. Uh, so I made some, some chair slides. I don't know if you have done some as well or. Oh, no, I didn't. Perfect. I just uploaded them. Um, do you want me to do the presentation screen sharey thing or do you want to do it? I'm, don't really care. Um, either way, now I don't have access to Jabber in my current environment. Okay, um, I do. I can do Cody MD, so I can probably go ahead and do minutes. That'd um, be great. Okay, so I can. Should I do the projection and then you can do? Yeah, the if, if you're able. That'll be great. And you saw Daniel did provide some slides, which I approved. I saw them there, yeah. Okay, I'm the only one in the Java room, so that's fine. And okay, so let me just check a uh, how the screen shareishness works well or not. I may need to move, let me see. I don't think I should have to make you a host, but oh uh the ball seems well, let me just let me just try. Make make presenter. Now that should certainly help. Yeah. So I think I'm sharing a screen, even though you can't really see it, but <laughs> No, I see it. You see it, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't hear it's wonderful the way they, they, they make these things. <laughs> so that's that one. Um, I probably made some mistake in the chair slides, and that's Daniel's slide deck. And that's all we that's those are the materials we have. I just left that stub networks thing as a possible agenda in case we'll see if Ted even turns up. Okay. That looks like it's working, so yeah? Yeah. Great. In that case, I think it's time for me to make coffee. <laughs> I shall reappear in a, in a minute or two. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you in a sec. Hi, Barbara. Good morning, Daniel. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Steven is not here. No. <laughs> He's getting some uh, more caffeine. <laughs> but he's uh, got slides ready to go and things. OK. So, um... Did you receive my slides? Um, yes. Okay, good. Sure. 
Now, yeah, I yes. did think that we had some discussion. And by the way, I started reading through. I didn't finish, I'm sorry to say. Um, I am going to have some, you know, at least from the beginning of it, I guess, you know, we'll need to think about as we move forward and um, anything about having a, sorry, it's, my brain still just isn't quite working. Um, Document mm -hmm. Shepherd, um, you know, I think the intro probably needs to be rewritten to be just a little more formal. Um, okay. And less chatty. Uh, but anyway, so so I think probably, you know, wherever we're, uh, last call happens, you know, if we move this up to the interior or if we try to do it here, um, yeah, I'll probably have some comments about that sort of thing. But I, I am a bit concerned with still the lack of, I guess, review that we've been seeing. And how many authors did you get a reply from, by the way? So uh, I, I, I think from, uh, for DHCP, I only received, uh, so Ralph and um, who's the other one? Um, Ray? Ray? Did I yeah, hear him? I mean, Michael, Ray, Ralph, and um, one guy from ISC, Tim um, Thomas. Okay. So Should I guess I... that's the the ones I, I, I've received some feedbacks. Um... Okay. Good morning, Dad. Oh, he doesn't have audio. No, he does. Yeah, uh, I, I made the presentation quite short because I am unsure. I think I, I saw this presentation as more um, open to discussion on how we move the work forward Yeah. as a technical presentation. Um, Though I do want to see if, you know, we can maybe you know, see if people have read it, um, if they do have comments, um, thoughts on it. So, yeah. And uh, I see Ted is here. Um, Ted, did you want to talk any during this meeting about the stub networks problem? Have you progressed that at all? If you hear me. And maybe you don't. Okay. I guess Ted may not be entirely present for them in the meeting just yet. No. Or just not finding that mute button. You never know. Those yeah. things can be so hard to find sometimes. Uh, he's also he's he's got a weird icon. Look. That's the mobile device. Oh, okay. so maybe he's in a noisy environment or something. So, or he's yeah. just using his iPhone. I mean, he does work for Apple now. <laughs> and I have used my iPhone before, and hopefully, you know, we don't have any of the issues that IoT Ops had. Ah, okay, Barbara, Ted is in chat, but he says he's he's seeing us talking but not hearing. Uh-oh. I think the problem's on his end because we are talking to each other. Yeah. Now that chat, I can open. Okay, now he hears us. Okay, good. Oh, good. You can ask again, so I suppose. So, Ted, um, did you want to talk to any today about stub networks? So I noticed it wasn't on the agenda and my schedule was such that it seemed like it would be okay to do it in a different meeting, if that's all right. Um, yeah, if I you could... want, we can schedule a different um, interim to discuss stub networks and we could probably advertise the discussion to some of the other working groups that are interested. Yeah, we, I think yeah. that makes sense. It's a slightly different, uh, possibly a slightly different population than is interested in the naming architecture stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we'll discuss that with the full working group since the call really starts in a minute. Um, and we'll probably come to that conclusion. Cool. Are you using the link provided by the Secretariat for note-taking? I am trying to get into that, but it's not... Well, okay, there's multiple. So let me try the other one. Who, where, where? Because I see that in one place it has an Etherpad link, and in another place it has a Codium D link, and I was going yeah, to... Yeah, the, 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 the Etherpad link is a lie. Yeah, but I, you know, if if I go to just the list, the the meeting list in one case, it actually has an Etherpad link. Oh, but weird. If I added the Codium D link that's provided in another place, I should probably mention that maybe on tools. I think. So, so that, does it just say it's an Etherpad <laughs> link, or is it actually an Etherpad uh, link? No, I, I, you know, in the hovering process, I looked at the link. It was an Etherpad link. Weird. So I'm, I'll, I'll mention that to the uh, tools people. Okay. So let's see. I should go ahead and start. Okay. Let me edit. Darn it. Um, okay. So Stephen is presenting uh, the slides as hopefully everyone can see and hopefully everyone hears me. I am hearing a bit of echo. Uh, Barbara, okay. I was just gonna suggest, I think you're authenticated, so it might be you that has to hit the start recording button. Ah, the start recording button. That's, That's the one I always forget to hit. Yeah. Okay. I am hereby hitting the start recording button. If that terrifies the bejeebies out of you, flee now. Okay. Actually, it says that it has been recording from the, for the past 14 minutes. So I'm sorry <laughs> if you didn't flee in time. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Apparently, that's automated. So it is being recorded. Um, okay, with that, uh, this is a meeting, an interim meeting in the Home Net Working Group. I do see that our illustrious AD, Eric Link, has joined us. Um, there is a link to where the uh, meeting materials are. I will be taking minutes on Code MD. Oh, yes, note well. Is anybody not familiar with NoteWell or would like to have an entire reading of this to them? I didn't think so. Okay, so NoteWell, um, these are the chairs. Um, RAD is Eric Vink. I see that we actually have both uh, INC area ADs on the call, so Eric Klein is here as well. Don't confuse them. Um, those are the working group pages, moving right along. Um, well, hopefully you already know that these are the WebEx details because you're here. And if you're not here, you're not seeing this slide. Um, that is the Jabber Room. Stephen said that he would be paying attention to the Jabber Room. I am not on Jabber because my current environment isn't supporting it. Um, the Etherpad, I haven't, I, I was a bit lax. I didn't get it started, but that is where we'll be putting the blue sheet. Is there anybody willing to help with uh, minute taking, by the way? Well, hopefully it won't be too hard and I will be there trying to take minutes. Um, chat line, 
news jabber, you know, we have a small enough group that I don't object to also um, chatting on the WebEx uh, if, you know, that's what you feel like doing. So either way works fine for me. Uh, and so today we'll be um, focused on the home net front end naming delegation and the DHC options. Um, for stub networks, well, actually, let's go ahead and we'll just uh, mention the conversation we had with Ted about that. Um, what we'll try to do on stub networks is set up a separate interim to go for stub networks and we'll invite the other working groups that are interested in stub networks, um, you know, just so that they know that that's something that we're talking about. And I'll do a doodle poll for that. Um, Ted, I think that's kind of what we discussed. Um, and so probably May, late May. What do people think? It's like a fine target plan. Target week or target weeks. Uh, so, so maybe, I mean, I think that sounds reasonable. Uh, probably, you know, starting a conversation on the mailing list a little bit ahead of that would probably make it more useful. Yeah. So let's say two or three weeks after the mailing list conversation starts. How about that? Sounds good. So that means like, uh, so I, I'm assuming Ted, if, if, if you'd be the one to start that discussion, if you want a late May interim, that means maybe in a couple of weeks, kind of kick off a discussion on the mailing list. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I need to do an update to the draft and then, and then I think it makes sense to, to start that discussion. So I'll try to get that done in the next week or so. That'd be great. Okay. Um, and so if there's no other administrative, and Eric, did you have anything you wanted to say? That would be me. Nothing at all. Okay, perfect. Um, then let's get going and I'm going to go on mute and try to catch up a little bit on the minutes while um, Daniel presents. Uh, so Daniel, I'm, I'm projecting, so just shout next slide whenever that's the correct thing to do. Uh, you might need to unmute yourself, Daniel. Yeah, that was to avoid the echo. <laughs> okay, so um, today um, I'm going to present the two drafts, so the front-end um, delegation and then um, the associated DHCP options. Um, I do not intend to to have um, I mean uh, to go over the full detail to have a detailed um, technical presentation, but it's more. Um, I, I think the way uh, the discussion should be how we move those drafts uh, forward. That's um, my, my intention. If you have any comment, any question, feel free to interrupt. I think we are um, um, a small number and we can have that uh, conversation style. So next slide. So, I mean, what has changed recently? with uh, what recently means. Um, so on the front end naming delegation, we, we worked on, um, um, I'm saying um, uh, on um, cleaning up a little bit the document. So uh, using a uniform, uh, t t a uniform uh, terminology. Uh, we also added some uh, clarifications um, as a, we could do any time we read a, um, a document. Um, but um, on the technical um, aspects, we, we, we formalized a little bit more uh, how to configure the um, uh, home uh, net uh, naming authority. And uh, we had that uh, configuration so being reviewed by Kasten. So thank you, Kasten. Uh, we removed some uh, unnecessary text and um, so that's uh, uh, five um, pages less of examples, for example, most likely. Um, and then um, on the DHCP options, we we synchronize the the terminology used in that document with the one um, 
in the um, in the front end uh, delegation most like mostly um well the dhcp options are just one way to configure the sjna so um so um, we it's better to have them fully aligned um, for a better um, understanding and uh, um, rather than repeating things it's just uh, being re reference and having uh, the description in one place um, we also remove some unnecessary uh, dhcp options and uh, add um, ini and security section uh, consideration section um, um, and uh, address uh, the comments uh, from uh, Bernie on that. So we think that both drafts are um, ready for a uh, working group last call. Um, and that's, um, so I'm gonna recap briefly what's are uh, in those drafts. Next slide. So, um, I mean, it, it has been, um, I mean, there has been a um, different period of activity in those drafts. So if I recall the history, we started um, having those drafts uh, when uh, HomeNet was um, uh, created. Then um, we, we were almost a um, request to work on the naming architecture and then go back to um, how we could um, outsource this uh, DNS zone from a uh, HomeNet uh, uh, router and so um i mean the the big so and we had so we had um uh, basically two period of activity one in the beginning of the home networking group and one at the end and the main change was that um in the first case we we assumed that we will have a, some kind of out of band configurations and so all the necessary parameters would be agreed between the two parties uh, while in in the second uh, phase of this uh, document, we 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 emphasize on how can we reduce the the parameters that need to be agreed, and um, have some sort of negotiations between the two parties. So, so this is why we had uh, those two peaks of uh, activity um, um, and in between a long dormant period. So the, the scope of um, this document is we, we would like that a home net um, is able to manage a zone, but uh, instead of export, uh, exposing the zone um, to the internet from the home net, we would like that the zone can be exported to a DNS infrastructure. So basically you have a full um, set of devices and instead of having your CPE, that is, if you want to reach those devices from outside, you have to publish those to the DNS. And instead of having your DNS zones being hosted on your CPE, um, we would like that the CPE can export that zone to a DNS outsourcing infrastructure, uh, like Dyne, like um, any cloud uh, service provider. So, um, we have um, in the current uh, specification, we have uh, basically three channels. Um, one, which is uh, the distribution channel, which means once a cloud provider got the zone he has to publish, um, he spread that into the DNS servers he's managing and that um, uh, exposing the zone to the internet. So this channel is completely outside of the scope of the document. And then you had another channel, which is how the cloud provider and your home net can exchange um, the, the information related to the zone itself and synchronize that zones. So this is a primary secondary. So it's uh, entirely um, uh, being handled by uh, very classical uh, DNS mechanisms. And so most of the um, the specification is, uh, is about um, the specification of the control channel, which is how um, the HNA, which is hosting that uh, zone, can agree with the DNS outsourcing infrastructure on how uh, the synchronization channels should be set, as well as some parameters um, that needs to be published. 
So this is mostly um, how the um, how the protocol, how the architecture um, is being defined. So next slide. So um, the control channel, if you need a negotiation, how you do that? Um, we use entirely DNS and only DNS to have those kind of exchange, which means when the HNA is willing to get some information, he's using a, um, an AXFR uh, request. And when the HNA is willing to push some uh, information to the DOE is going to use a DNS update. The reason we use only DNS messages is to have, um, I mean, to only rely on DNS um, as opposed to um, a, an, another party, uh, another protocol such as HTTP, for example. So um, we had that discussion, and that was the choice that has been made. So um, next slide. So how we configure, um, uh, so I, I forgot to mention that um, um, all channels are uh, protected with TLS. And we also have some discussion why we use TLS. And um, the, 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 um, the default protocol is uh, DNS over uh, TLS. So how to configure that? So we defined a, um, uh, um, an information model. So that's the new in, the, in this version. And, and the only thing we need is the registered domain, which is the domain for the home net. And there is no way um, the home net can guess that uh, domain name. I mean, we have to provision the, the network with that one, as well as um, which is the distribution master we, we are um, outsourcing the zone. Um, and those are the two, so we only have two uh, mandatory parameters. Then we have a, um, a number of additional parameters. Uh, one of those um, we, it could be the transport layer we're going to use. So it could be um, a DOT, DOH, DOQ. So that's uh, depending on how things are moving. Um, and you can also add um, some um, additional um, parameters that are, um, I mean, of course, optional as well. One of those is the ACL, which, um, which defines which are the IP addresses um, uh, the DNS outsourcing um, uh, infrastructure is uh, going to use so that you can configure appropriately your firewall. Um, but the default is that it's going to be only use one IP address, for example. So, um, so that's uh, it's not a. Um, I mean, these are the Envision um, uh, way to configure um, the HNA. So, um, so one way the reason we have this information model is that uh, we thought that it could be useful if you're um, on a, on an interface with your registrar or your ISP, and it just mentioned, yeah, use that link with this JSON um, object to embed the, the configurations. And so we, we so it's, it's one way to configure um, the HNA. And um, I think in next slide, we have another way to configure um, this uh, HNA. So of course, Whichever way you use to configure your HNA, um, you expect that the, um, the same parameters are going to be provided. And um, in one way we use uh, to provision the HNA is uh, DHCP options to carry all those uh, parameters. Um, and I mean, um, in that case, we reduce um, the number of parameters. Um, we don't have uh, all of them. So why we did we have a special uh, attention to uh, DHCP options? One of those is um, that ISP has a, has a special place in this ecosystem. The first thing is that the ISP is assigning you the IP address. So 
he's going to uh, manage on your behalf um, the, um, the reverse zone. So he's only there for one, one reason. And the other one is that in, in some cases, um, the ISP might also be able to assign you a forward zone. And so, um, and, um, and given that in, um, for many ISP, the CPU is also managed by the ISP. Um, I mean, we, we have a close relationship between those two. Um, so next slide. So this is a sort of exchange we are considering. So you have a DHCP request where the CPE is asking, uh, which is my registered domain? What is my, uh, provide me information about uh, my distrib distrib distribution master and the reverse distribution master. And the DHCP response provide uh, those information. Um, for the registered domain, it's FQDN. For the, uh, the masters, uh, it's um, FQDN and um, uh, the specification of the transport layer being used. And I think that's the, the end of the presentation. So um, I'm open to, um, to any questions, any comment. Daniel, if you allow me to jump into the queue without any hat, uh, I chat with Ted in the chat and we were wondering whether though RSC8484 supports any transfer of DNS. As far as I know, but from the top of my head, I am far from being a specialist of though, it's only queries. Yeah. So um so yeah, so what we uh, so we just allocated the code points um for uh do and uh DNS of a quick is is just uh, I mean, the, 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 the main purpose was to show that we, we are not stuck to one protocol and that, that can um, evolve over time, but we did not discuss that at all. Uh, and maybe I'm understanding that comment as um, it might be better to remove the request for assigning those uh, code points. I would say so because that's no okay. protocol right now behind and only specify then the, the draft in DPRI for transfer over TLS. Okay. It, the, it's, um, I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have the ability to, to add a new transfer protocol if, if that becomes needed, but, um, you shouldn't put anything in that you can't already implement because otherwise it's just going to be confusing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, it's, uh, one of the reason we, we add those is, uh, because I didn't want the text to be Stuck on one, so I, I yeah. leave the option open. But um, I understand that uh, yeah. Now not not we you're not stuck with that one. We can remove uh, those. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, another... only the INS section uh, being uh, updated. So yeah, another question that I had, Daniel, is um, has anybody implemented this? Yeah. So um, I think. Um, Ray is in the list. So we, we had an implementation from Ray and uh, Michael also um, um, worked run, on that. I, I run Ray's code. Oh, okay. Michael, take the floor then. Uh, 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 <laughs> and I expected to have a different client implementation, but uh, it didn't get finished yet. So, so you feel like this is the, the you, you, race code has implemented the, the protocol roughly as described in the document and it, it seems to work? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, you have a very wrong employer employer address for Ralph Weber. Ralph Weber. Just FYI. <laughs> it's like way out of date. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you've got we're not, looking at we're aluminum. Not we're not getting responses from him as part of the issue. Oh. Okay. I can, I can maybe try and track him down. <laughs> oh, um, the, I, I did have a comment. Um, you, you brought, you put up a, uh, the chart that's, I think it's figure one from, from, uh, the front name, front 
end naming delegation document. Yeah. And it's a bit hard to read, actually. Mm. Um, there are a couple of issues. One is, um, I think, I, I realize it would make the, the, the diagram bigger, but the fact that you don't mention that the in adder zone is also available or can also be managed this way feels like a, a significant omission. Um, and then, uh, like, it's not really clear what the relationship between the home net authoritative server and the HNA is. Um, and it might be nice to put in some arrows or something that makes that a little clearer. So the two comments, the first, uh, which zone, you mean uh, uh, the reverse zone? So yeah, right, exactly. I You've got example.com, but you don't have okay. in in or So, so we, could make the, yeah. we could make the diagram just a bit taller by adding some lines. Uh, where it says example.com, we could put in adder ARPA or IP6.ARPA. Yeah. Um, I think it'd then, be fine to just it, do one of those. And then you're saying that the box on the upper left HNA is not doesn't have any arrows to home net authority yeah. or server. Uh, yeah, that that's a good point. I guess we can connect them somehow. Yeah. And then um I don't know, did you guys talk about redacting the the uh, the home net zone or is that out of scope for this? What do you mean by redacting? Like stopping to run it, serve it? No, no, redacting meaning leaving out things you don't want to be public. Yeah, so we're really, it's really supposed to be opt in. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the GUI that I imagine is one where you have on the left, you have, you know, everything discovered in MDNS or DNS SD. Um, and that the, the administrator really has to click on the things they want on the right and then they, they send them over. And so it, it really is opt in that way. Um, mm -hmm. that's the interface I, I imagine. Um, and I mean, so the, the, the part that's kind of, um, the convenience or or something is the fact that they they don't have to copy the IP addresses over uh, from right. left to right. And of course, if IP addresses change for whatever reason, then they would be copied over. They would be updated. Um, and further, I would think that um, that um, it would probably filter out privacy uh, uh, temporary addresses. Uh, would not publish those either. So right. if you have something that is offering a service, but is also going outbound with a with an a, with a private address, then uh, it wouldn't be uh, linking that publicly. Yep. Uh, I think we we are discussing that those uh, those points in the draft. Um, but if there is um, anything more. Um, um yeah we're we're happy to have those um i think it, it's mostly related to uh privacy configuration as well mm -hmm. as uh, the setting of your network because uh, that's um yeah the reason i was asking the question is because in the in the diagram you you only mention the public home net zone and and mm. you know implicitly there's a private home net zone but i, I don't see like and, and presumably the private home net zone is what Home net, the home net DNSSEC resolver actually advertises on the home net. So that just feels like an omission in this, in this, in this diagram. But I realize that the diagram is already kind of complicated. So maybe that's not a solve uh, problem. Uh, yeah. So I think the other question is whether we wanted to really get into that other side of things, the private uh, home net zone. And I, I found, I, I'm not opposed to discussing it, but it seems to me that that any amount of text we put in there fosters the potential for more confusion rather than less. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, to me, the thing that, that that's missing is just the mention that there, that there does potentially need to be a private home net zone. I think talking about how it's managed mm. or anything like that would be out of scope for this document. But So if we could but, find space in this diagram for a box with an arrow pointing to the left saying private home net zone, and not connected to anything else, would that be something that you would, that would help you? Yeah, or, you know, you might put the private home net zone in the authoritative server and have an arrow uh, between, so you currently don't have any arrows between the public home net zone in the H 
in the HomeNet authoritative server and the public HomeNet zone in the HNA, which I think are the same zone. Um, yeah. And the, di the diagram sort of implies that hosts on the home network are going to be querying the public home net zone, which I don't think is correct. So that's really what I'm kind of calling your attention to. So it might make sense to in the home net authoritative server zone to have the public home net zone and the private home net zone and make it look like the private home net zone is what's getting updated and queried since presumably it is. Um, and then, uh, you know, have, have a similar arrows between the public and private home net zone. So that indicating that, that the public home net zone is updated from the private home net zone, but not talking about how that happens. I mean, maybe that's too much detail, but it just, it, when I look at this document, I, I'm, I'm afraid that somebody's going to read this document and think, oh, we're, we're proposing to publish your entire home net zone, um, on the internet. And that sounds bad. So I'm not going to go any further. Yeah, uh, I think I got your point. Um, I think that's feasible. Um, and um, yeah, I, I will see what we can put in the in the diagram. But I, 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 it sounds that it's not impossible. Um, I think we also have enough text on that. But I will double check um, to clarify that. Okay, thanks. By the way, um, when you're doing DNSSD, I think that the temporary addresses aren't published in the DN in the in, at all anyway. Uh, Stuart might correct me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So you would only see the the uh, the stable address in the in the DNSSD advertisement. Uh, Ted is yeah, correct. Even with multicast DNS on the local LAN, uh, it only publishes stable addresses. Privacy addresses only exist for outbound connections for for the sake of anonymity, and they're not expected to stay around. So it wouldn't make sense to publish those as addresses for inbound connections. So point being, you don't need to filter those. Yeah, I was just thinking out loud that you'd probably would filter them if they showed up, but yeah, sure. absolutely. But how do you know? Uh, well, it, 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 it is a good question, right? Yeah, so. I mean, I, you know, if, if the document's not talking about it, we don't really need to care about that here, but I just mentioned it because you you'd said that, that it was being filtered and, and, and I think uh -huh. the only place that really it can be filtered is on the host because the host is the only thing that knows what's a stable address and what's a private address. Uh, you're, I think that ultimately you're right. Um, but there are some other patterns that we do recognize as being, you know, Slack addresses and stuff, but, um, yeah. absolutely you're, you're, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess, right. You have to filter out, um, link local addresses, which would be published in MDNS. So and ULAs just, and ULAs. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. So just to clarify, um, does MDNS use, um, any other, uh, non-private IP addresses? So MDNS is going to advertise your link local address because okay. MDNS is link local, right? So, yeah. so for MDNS, okay. it's always going to work <laughs> and you know, which link it works on. Um, and then it's also going to advertise your stable public addresses, whether they're ULAs or GUAs. And so mm -hmm. that's where the filtering out of ULAs comes in as Michael was just mentioning. Okay. Uh, one other small comment on the on the DHC document is that you, DHCP document is that you never actually say what an HNA is in the DHCP document, and it would be worth having a reference because when I was reading the document, I actually found that like I was like, "What the hell is an HNA?" Because <laughs> I read okay. that document first. <laughs> okay, that's easy to do. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Okay, home net naming architecture." Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, otherwise, I mean, this, this looks good. Uh, so Daniel, just a question. Uh, you said you think this is, this is ready for working group's last call. Did you want to talk about that now or wait till the very end? Well, unless we are not at the, the very end, um, any time, I mean, uh, if you want to break that now or I'm fine. 
Uh, so I, I guess I'm, I mean, I'm, if other people have technical discussion to have, that's probably better to do first. So there's, there's a, there is a question in, in the chat, for example, from Eric Twine. What's the auth story there? So, um, um, so it's, uh, I, I, I think the answer is it's a long story <laughs> because, uh, the draft has, a. Uh, a, a long life. So if I recall correctly, um, when we, I mean, we, we had a, a, some authors um, that were present at the, the very beginning, and that had some uh, contributions to the, to the document. Um, um, I, I think it was, uh, we started that when Ted was an AD. So, um, and then uh, things changed. Some some people were uh, working on uh, different companies. Uh, some people moved out uh, out of the ITF. So um, so this is why we we had um, um, a quite lo a long list of authors. Um, my understanding is that um, some are you talking authors... about the author story or the auth authentication story? Yeah, I was uh, taking off for um, the office. Oh, yeah, I think uh, yeah, Eric's I think asking about authentication. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of lot of background for this, but yeah, uh, er Eric. That so, I mean, the, one of the reasons why we put the CDDL and this JSON blob in there is because um, we wanted to. We recognize that, that the people building uh, home net routers and the people doing the outsourcing are not necessarily in the same vertical and. Um, that people want to be able to go to other uh, other third parties, right? Um, and so uh, by defining this blob that you basically have to copy and paste, you, for instance, could copy and paste from one to the other, um, that at least we're getting all of the parameters clearly articulated and not making people type them in and get them wrong. Um, of course, that could also happen through some kind of an OAuth 2 uh, process where the 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 process starts at your with a web interface to your home net router you say i want you know to go to this particular uh outsourcing agency and you get redirected and you log you log you know log in with oauth and then you know what comes back is a post uh from your browser to your your home net router to, to put the right blob in um so that's strictly configuration Right, but it is authorization. You are saying I want to publish my zone to this external entity, and I've just told you what the distribution master is, um, and then we expect that that is validated in TLS using this typical sixty-one twenty-five mechanisms um, that we have. Um, so the the synchronization channel is uh, DNS over TLS, right? And we thought a long hard about you know people are saying oh it should just be a JSON interface and everything should be JSON up and down. Um, and, uh, Ray convinced us that it was easier to do with DNS, um, and that there were fewer moving parts and that the hard part was getting the TLS not, uh, there. Um, and that once you had the TLS there, the, the data format was irrelevant at that point, you might as well be in DNS format rather than JSON. Does that answer your question, Eric? Uh, perhaps I think I have, um, more reading to do. I'm just kind of wondering why the how the how the isp trusts the home net to to update uh so so there is a there there is a uh a zone transfer right um and the 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 question is perhaps better asked is how does the hna uh accept that the uh isp's um distribution master is authorized to do the uh axfr right that, that, that's a, that's another good question. I was thinking the other yeah. direction. So, so, so that happens in this synchronization channel that is set up in that space. Okay. Thank you. And Ray writes there. So I didn't want to get into the, the detail right here because I'm still asleep, but I get it wrong. But Ray points to, yes. So there is a certificate provided by the HNA when he, in the synchronization channel. And um, that's uh, how that works. Yeah, that, that's what I was missing. Thank you.
So any other technical questions, comments before we go to working group? That's call Ari. I did have one question in looking through this was um so I do notice that you've got the list of various DNS over quick DNS over HTTP and DOT and DO53. Um, is there any thought, and you said you're going to get rid of the DOH, um, is there any thought to just creating a registry for this and having it in the IANA so that it can be modified as needed? Or? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, um, this is um, this is how we do. I mean, basically, you have a DHCP options that says uh, a field transport, and uh, you had some cut points saying uh, DNS or DNS over TLS. And I added the others, so I mean, I, I think we added the others because uh, once we put two of them, we went, eh, and then people are going to be like, well, what about, what about, what about? And we're like, oh, just throw them in, right? So we weren't really thinking about whether zone transfers over DOH was a thing or not. We were just, let's be inclusive. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it, it looked like they were intended to be an IANA registry, but I didn't see them in the IANA considerations. No, I don't think we made it that way because I didn't oh, imagine okay. that. I didn't. I, I I don't think I imagined that there would be more than the four that we already had there. Um, and um, but you're right. You know, it, it, we should remove the ones that really actually don't make. I guess really don't make any sense. Um, and you know, provide an IANA. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, considerations on that. And I think it'd probably just be specification required um, uh, ICF action, because if someone comes up with a, a, a document that says how to do AXFR over HTTP, uh, DNS over HTTP, then they would extend our, our, our document. So there is an, an INS section for the DHCP um, uh, options. Um, and I'm hearing that we should move, uh, I mean, we should not move, but we should have an, another IANA registry for the, um, the main document, the architecture document. Well, I didn't, you, you had the IANA considerations, but these particular options weren't in the, those considerations as far as I could see. Or, Maybe it wasn't clear to me, but anyway, um, just, just something to, to be, think about. Just yeah. Yeah, I, it, I think it does need to be a registry, and I think that um, it's actually important not to list anything you don't know how to do or don't want done. For example, you list DO fifty three, but the document basically says that DOS DOT is mandatory. And yeah. so um, I don't think that you really want to list DO53 because you don't want it used, right? You want DOT to be used. So uh, I would only list things that you actually want to be used. And, and uh, you know, a future protocol that, that we don't know about yet that we decide to switch to is probably going to be better than DOT, not worse than DOT. So, so anything that's worse than DOT, you definitely shouldn't list. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not a problem for um, um, to add. Um, one question is: um, I, I'm just opening the DHCP options. Um, what do you think should be? Should we go for um, a specification required or um... two hundred fifty six? slots right so it, it, is it is it one byte or two bytes so for the dhcp i i think i i use two byte two bytes oh well then that's enough that you're never going to run out so i would just say you know uh maybe specification required just because you want people to document what they're doing, but I really doubt you're going to have a problem. Okay. I would agree. All 
I mean, one additional reason to say specification required is so that we don't wind up in a situation where somebody adds a code point just so that they can be incompatible. But I don't know why anybody would do that. Yeah, sure. Okay, any other technical comments or questions before we start thinking about processing stuff? And on the process stuff in the chat there, I, I suggested a couple of chair like process like questions. Um, so if anybody wants to quibble with those, now's a good chance. And uh, I, I don't know that we're going to get a, uh, a huge rush of people all send their review because I guess we all know how quiet the work group uh, list is and so on. So, but I think it's worth asking the questions before we figure out how to do. So, if you're okay with that, Barbara, I'll go ahead and just ask those questions. Go ahead. Okay, so so I'm just wondering how many people have read one or both of these recently, and you can define recently yourself. If you if you have, maybe just type a yes or something into the chat, or or use your microphone. And I mean non-authors. Okay, so the, the, the rush seems to have died down there in the in the chat. Uh, the, the for the audio, I guess we had uh, you know four people with 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 yes or partial yes. Uh, okay, uh, so how many people are willing to review these documents? And, and uh, in this case, again, if you can state your willingness in the chat or in audio, that would be great. Barbara says yes. Ted says yes. Eric Fink says yes. Well, <laughs> and I, I, not yeah, really. Not the yes you want, want though. <laughs> Chris Box says yes. Great. Karsten will review partly. Okay, and that that rush has stopped now. Um. So okay, so we've got like other than chairs and AD, we have like th uh, th three, I think, is it? Or yeah, we have three people who are not chairs or AD uh, saying they will do a review. Uh, and then the third question I had before we figure out what this all means is, does anyone violently object to thinking about progressing these? Uh, does anybody think that we, you know, either technically or we just don't have enough uh, commentary and, and review to claim consensus? Um, so are there, is there anyone who's, who sort of says, really, we shouldn't do this here now. We should figure out some other way of doing it. And if so, why? So I'm hearing silence on that, not seeing anything in the chat. Um, Ted is encouraging us to finish this. Okay, so so it sounds like we, we have the position we kind of knew we had, which is that we have some work that pe that people think is worthwhile. And we have a problem progressing it because we don't know that we've gotten enough review. Um, uh, this is something I think we discussed with uh, Eric at RID before. And so it might be that getting a review, you know, progressing it as with a working group last call, but then getting a further review from one of the area directorates and treating that like another last call or something like that. You might, know, you yeah. can do it the same thing, right? So you may want to ask an early review or uh, just right now, and at least at the end, directorate to get the DNS and the HCP pass on it. And I would strongly suggest as well, when you issue the working group last call in HomeNet, you copy DNS ops and deprive for the, um, the front end naming delegation, and you copy DHC working group for the DHCP option as well, just to be sure. Sure, I'm, I'm, I think that's, those are good suggestions and well worth doing. Uh, my fear is that we, we won't actually get that much more review and we'll still be kind of left feeling a bit short in terms of being able to claim rough consensus. But we, we could try. I agree. And, yeah, I mean, we can try. And if we try and it doesn't quite work, then it's your problem, Eric, anyway, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> I said nothing, right? So it was somebody faking me, right? 
It's simply somebody using the French accent pretending to be Eric, but that's okay. Oh, no, um, I will assume it, no problem, of course. Okay, so it, so it sounds like the plan, um, I'll ask in a second if the authors want to do an update before we start this, but it sounds like we have some people to review at a small number. The authors think it's ready with the, you know some changes as per discussion today. Um, we have a few people to review it. We do a working group last call, promote it to DNS OptiPrive, int, ask for an early integer review, maybe an early sector review. Um, see what we get and then hand it over to Eric and let him use his enormous wisdom to, to solve the problem, if there is one. Does that sound like a plan to everybody? Or anybody prefer another plan? Hearing silence. Then I guess the question is to the author, do you, do, do you want to respin these on the basis of today's discussion or before we start asking for these reviews? Uh, you're muted, I think, Daniel. We're going to update the document, but I expect that to be done in a, in the few coming days. And um, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's going to have a huge impact on a working group last call. Yeah, and then the only thing is if, we're, if, if we are asking for, you know, integer, sector, DNS top, et cetera, to review it, we don't, want to, we don't want to change the version midstream. Yeah, so wait a week. I'm going to update that. And as soon as uh, we have the update, uh, we can kick the working group last call. Okay, so that sounds like a plan. Barbara, does that sound like a reasonable plan to you? I know you're busy taking notes, but. Yes, we will wait a week and then start WGLC, but making sure that the uh, draft update has come through. Okay, and we can, yeah, we can craft a, a, a you know, a cover note for the working group last call that tries to explain we're encouraging lots of review because we have a, because of the situation we're in. Um, all right. That's anything else to talk about on these drafts? Not hearing anything. Uh, oops. So this is our agenda. Uh, we've done one, two, and three, I think. Uh, four, we earlier di di discussed and figured it would be better to, to have this as a separate topic in, you know, in, in after Ted has started some discussion on the list in a few weeks and maybe towards the end of May, have another interim on that topic. Uh, it's just something that people I think were interested in at the last IETF meeting, but probably, you know, it needs a bit more time in the oven or something, I guess. So four, we've decided to punt till end of May ish. I, last time we discussed it, I promised to do an update before we uh, before we discussed it in an interim, and it seems like that's worth doing. So, yeah, that's and and so that brings us to five. I think. Any other business? Just one thing to remind the participants of this interim meeting to fill in the blue sheet. There are, I think, 12 people in the blue sheet, and we are 18 in the call. It'd be cool to get all the numbers to provide. Good, good thinking. So please, please do fill in the blue sheet, uh, which is in the Code D thing, isn't it? Up at the top, down the bottom, not sure where it is. Yeah. It's down at the bottom of the, the Code and Code I. How do you pronounce that? Code I just say Code D. Okay. Um, so down the bottom of that page uh, is the blue sheets. Please put your name there if you've been enjoying this session, or even if you haven't. Okay, uh, any, any other business? Don't think so. Barbara, any, anything else? No, I'm good. Thanks. I think it was a good call. Um, look forward to getting uh, some movement on these drafts and also on the stud networks. Yep. And I'll polish up the meet the minutes and post them. Great. And again, if you if you haven't yet, please do uh, put your name on the blue sheet. Um, I mean, I guess you're kind of recorded anyway, but it's it's much better to do it right. Uh, and so with that, I think we're done for today. A little bit early, and that's good. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it, folks. So thank you. Um, 
I look forward to some traffic on the list. Those drafts work group last calls, etc. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>